Hi, I'm going to demonstrate for you how to perform your Metals Plus HCL lab. This lab is probably going to be for you the most challenging lab that you've performed so far. That's because it includes several different concepts from different chapters you've studied so far. It's going to have you know, some elements of, of equation balancing, of stoichiometry, uh, mass mole relationships, and gas laws all included in one lab. I'm going to demonstrate for you how to perform the lab and give you a few tips, but I am not going to do any of the problems for you in this particular lab exercise, so it'll be a little more challenging. First I'll have you notice that this object looks like a small trash can or an R2-D2 here in the middle. This is a, called a pressure vessel, and it has a septum up top where you can put a syringe of these hydrochloric acid inside, and it has a vacuum valve that's constantly going to a vacuum. Uh, when it's red, it's closed, it's green, it's open, and drawing a vacuum on this vessel. You have some unknowns up here on the left, and you have a balance on the bottom left. A few things to note is that the pressure reading is in TOR. In our class, we typically talk about pressures in atmospheres, and you may want to convert the TOR to atmospheres to if you want to use the ideal gas law constants that we give in class most commonly. There are 760 TOR in one atmosphere. Also notice that the equations might throw you off a little bit when they're balanced because they use fractional mole relationships and their, and their coefficients. This one reads 3 halves uh, H2, which is 1.5 moles. Uh, if it's something some people do. I don't really like it myself. But you can, if it makes you feel better, you can balance this by saying it's 2 iron plus 6 HCl gives you 2 iron chloride and 3 a final thing you might notice is that this reads mole equivalent of iron. It just means mole equivalent just means moles. It's just a fancy way of saying the word moles that we use it in class. To perform this lab, I'm going to skip this part for you, and you can do that yourself. Um, you're going to have to use the gas law, which is PV equals NRT, the ideal gas law. And you're going to have to be using N. Remember, N is the number of moles of a substance. R is the gas constant that we give you in class. And they're saying that this uh, is over water, so that there's water in this vessel as well. And then you have to subtract the pressure of water and the total pressure that you're reading the whole time. Um, so that's a little minor complication that you'll have to keep track of. So performing the lab itself is rather straightforward, but I'll show you how to do it to help you understand a little better. And to do that, I'm going to drag the zinc reagent to the analytical balance. And then I'm going to tear to zero the balance. And I'm going to add two scoops of zinc metal here to give me about two grams. I'm going to record that mass so that it's recorded over here in my, my data set. Bring this back up. It's good lab practice to always put your reagents away as soon as you're done with them and not leave them uncapped. And the, I don't think the device will actually let you proceed if you don't do that. Then, before you, you're going to draw a vacuum in a minute, but before you draw a vacuum, you're going to want to drop your metal in there. You don't want to have to open the vessel up after you've already drawn a vacuum on it. That'll ruin your vacuum. We'll go to the next page here, and then we will uh, draw a vacuum on the system, and you'll see the pressure drop. And it drops really quickly, and it closes automatically when it's all the way down as far as it will go. And um, and then it's going to tell us to inject some hydrochloric acid to the septum in the top. So you do that, you just drop it in there and it'll automatically squirt it in. And then you'll see the pressure rise. The pressure rises because the hydrochloric acid is dissolving the iron metal. And as it does that, it generates two things. Uh, iron chloride, which doesn't contribute to the pressure in the vessel, and hydrogen gas, which does contribute to the pressure in the vessel. It's also contributing a third thing that makes the uh, pressure go up, and that is temperature. So it's getting hotter inside, and that makes it hotter than the ambient temperature outside, which is 22 degrees Celsius. Uh, short tip is you're going to want to convert that to Kelvin and not use Celsius in your gas law equations. Now, the pressure starts to go back down as the pressure vessel cools and comes to ambient or what we call room temperature, ambient's another name for room temperature. And it might take a long time, 
uh, you know, it could take a couple minutes, three minutes, I believe that the software sort of randomizes that to kind of nestle back down into a stable temperature. It looks like it's not really going anywhere now. And so when it's all the way, when we're comfortable that it's not moving anymore, we can then record this pressure. And it gets recorded over here in Tor. And when that's done, it's gonna, we're gonna want to empty the pressure vessel by dragging it and releasing it onto the waste container. And then we do the same thing for the other two uh, reagents after that. And what you'll do is you will grab the other unknowns, do the same thing. One, one says to take you know four or five grams and the other one says to take uh, some other mass. And then at the end you have to use these relationships between the pressure that arises using PV NR equals NRT, you can calculate uh, from that the number of moles of gas that had it been, and from the mass and the volume, you can uh, and the pressure increase, and you can, can you can calculate the number of moles of stuff it must have been. And so they give you a few choices at the end, and that can help you to uh, solve the problem overall. And you'll have to you know dump the stuff out, and you would have to let me go back here a little bit you know just like you did before it's the same thing I'm just going to give you another quick demonstration in this case it's an unknown and you just click however many times it says I think it says four to five grams this time and let's put a little more in there we don't want to max out our measurement system and then we say record that mass and then we go to the next page and then we open the back uh, we drop the stuff in and then we draw a vacuum, just like we did last time. I think you're probably already used to this by now. I'm probably tired of hearing me talk about it. Drag and drop the syringe into place, and it's the same, same exact process. You're going to watch the pressure go up, record the pressure difference. And these are taken over water, and so you have to subtract the vapor pressure of water from the system at 22 degrees, and it gives it to you early in the lab. It's a simple subtraction, but it's a place you can make an error if you're not watching. Now, see the pressure's going back down because it's coming to equilibrium temperature. And then when you're satisfied with the, the final temperature, which will be here in a moment, let's just say we are now, you press record. And then you'll go, and when you get to the blue pages is when the when the work starts with the the math and the first thing it asks you to do is calculate the moles of zinc from the mass because you know the molecular weight of zinc but you won't know what's going on for the unknowns and that's where the the challenge comes in and it gives you some you know it tells you to correct the pressure here and then you can you can find this is the important part is that you can find the volume of the vessel from the known zinc and the known uh, grams of zinc and the molecular weight of zinc, you can solve for V and PV equals NRT. Once you have V and you have P as the pressure, you'll have V from this equation. You'll have R and you'll have T. You'll be able to solve for N, which is the number of moles of the unknown. So you'll have you'll know how many moles there were and you'll be able to get your stoichiometry of your balanced reaction from that. And that's how you solve. That's the, generally how you do it. It walks you through here and it gives you four choices so you'll be able to land on the right one. And you'll know how many grams you put in and you'll know how many moles you put in so you'll know how many grams per mole the stuff is and you'll know it's molecular weight and you'll be able to solve for it that way. And um, it has a few other kind of harder questions in here that I'll let you solve on your own and um, that'll be some of the challenge. And then um, you have plenty of time to work on this and that's that's this lab. I, I hope this has been helpful to you and I wish you good luck.